Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sally and this is Secret Life of a Seamstress. So I'm here today to share with you my full review on the I Am Merlin coat by I Am Patterns. So if you are new to my channel, my channel is all about sewing, sometimes some other crafting as well and sometimes a bit of knitting. So if you're also into sewing and knitting and crafting, I'd love you to subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos. So if you've followed me for a while or if you've watched any of my recent videos you'll know that I've been making the I Am Merlin coat by I Am Patterns for quite a while. But I thought I would share a full review on this coat and how I found it just in case anyone else is thinking of making their first coat. There wasn't a lot of reviews on this actual pattern when I was coming to make the coat for myself so I thought it might be helpful to do a full review of how I found the pattern and also I really wanted to make this video just as a record for myself with my first coat. So these are the line drawings of the I Am Merlin coat. Um, this is the pattern which I bought directly from I Am Patterns. Um, when this coat was released, I think it was released around last autumn time, around October, perhaps a bit earlier, maybe September. Um, but when this coat pattern was released, I brought it straight away. I really, really liked the look of it and I had been on the lookout for a coat pattern anyway. And this one really caught my eye. So I bought it straight away and I bought it for some reason directly from I Am Patterns, which meant that because they are a French company it was coming straight from France. So I ended up paying quite a hefty postage fee on my pattern. So if you are thinking about buying this pattern, don't do that. Buy it from somewhere like the Fold Line or somewhere in the UK where you won't have to pay such a hefty postage fee like I did. Tip number one. <laughs> so one of the main things that's worth noting about this pattern is that even if you are buying the printed version which I've bought, um, it does come as one big pattern piece and all the pieces are on top of each other so there's no way to avoid having to trace it off which is a bit strange um, I don't think you'd normally get that in a printed pattern but really unless you're someone that likes to keep all of your patterns um, in the lovely pattern envelopes and it is quite a nice pattern envelope it's kind of a gold backing with a see-through front all of my trace pieces are in there obviously it would normally come with a picture like this and it does look quite nice so it's nice to have in your pattern collection um, but really I couldn't see a benefit other than having it in your collection to buying the printed pattern because you still need to trace it out so you could just as easily print the PDF version um, and cut it straight out to your size and it would probably be a bit quicker maybe. I found it quite difficult to trace out actually it was quite hard to see the pattern pieces because they were all on top of each other so before I even started to trace, I had to go around my size with quite a dark felt pen just so that I could see what I was actually tracing out and that it was my size pieces that I was going to be tracing. Um, so yeah, that's something to note about the pattern. So the pattern comes in both French and English. It comes in quite a wide range of sizes. So it goes from a size 36 up to a size 46 and the smallest size is bust 32 waist 24, hip 34, up to the largest size, which is a bust 40, waist 32, uh, hip 42. Um, so yeah, quite a wide range of sizes. It also gives the finished garment measurements, and those are for the smallest size, bust 41, hip 44. Yeah, and the finished garment length is 36 inches. So there's quite a lot of ease in the finished garment measurements. Um, so my measurements are, Bust 32, waist around 27 and hips 36. So even though my measurements are bigger than the smallest size, I still went for the smallest size just because there was such a lot of ease in the finished garment measurements. And I knew that I didn't want my coat to be too oversized and I was probably gonna to have to take it in here and there anyway. Um, the pattern's drafted for a five foot five frame. Um, I'm five foot three. So uh, yeah, there was always gonna be a bit of shortening there. But if you are taller or shorter than five foot five inches, you might want to either shorten or lengthen the pattern as well. The recommended fabrics to use for the coat are boiled wool, melton or boucle, and it says to use a medium to heavy weight fabric with some body to keep the structure of the coat. So I've gone for a really lovely camel coloured wool coating fabric, which I got from Minerva. And um, on the inside, I've lined it with a checkered taffeta lining fabric which you can just about see there. So since this was my first coat and I felt a bit nervous about the whole process I decided to make a twirl or a muslin from an old bed sheet that I had laying around um, and I'm so pleased that I did that. 
I would definitely recommend doing that, particularly if um, you are thinking about making your first coat. I found it so helpful just to go through the whole process um, and just know where I was with the pattern and what I was doing with it before I actually came to cutting and sewing my proper, really lovely um, coat fabric. And of course, I also wanted to get the sizing right. Um, I knew that I wanted to shorten the coat because I wanted it to come around mid calf length. Um, the coat design is quite oversized anyway, it's designed to be quite big and oversized and long. Um, but I don't, I personally don't really like wearing anything that feels too oversized. I hate to feel that sleeves are coming over my wrists and I just don't like to, don't feel comfortable wearing anything too kind of big. So even though I really like the style and the shape of the coat, I knew that I wanted to kind of adapt it slightly so that it wouldn't be quite so oversized on me. So one of the main things to note was the uh, welt pocket instructions. So just to mention this pattern booklet, um, although it's pretty good really, it's definitely not a tilly in the buttons hold your hand the whole way through kind of pattern booklet. It definitely assumes some prior knowledge there, I think. Um, the instructions are pretty vague. There's not many pictures. I'll show you inside. So there are a few pictures, but they're kind of just um, line drawings really. There were no photos or anything to show you the process. Um, I did find it a little bit vague at times. Um, and particularly when it came to the welt pocket construction. So the welt pockets are here, you should be able to just see that on the camera. So the welt pockets go into the side there and they're just finished with this kind of welt um, facing and everything's kind of hidden inside. Um, and I'd never made a welt pocket before. So one Saturday afternoon, I decided to have a go at making a welt pocket from my bed sheets. And oh my goodness, I got in such a state with it. So I did try to follow the instructions in the pattern booklet. I also watched some YouTube videos. I tried and tried to make this welt pocket, but um, it just wasn't working with these pattern pieces. So about three hours later, I decided to actually look at the Iron Patterns website. And there was a really, really helpful tutorial about how to make the welt pockets for this particular coat because they are a little bit different to a normal welt pocket. So why I didn't decide to look there in the first place, I don't know, but I would have saved myself a lot of time and energy if I'd have just done that in the first place because the tutorial that they've got on their website is actually really helpful. It's kind of a, a photo video kind of thing. So it takes you through each step and it shows you a photo of how to do it. And once I've watched that, it just all came together and I got these pockets done so quickly. So if you're thinking of making this coat, just make sure that you pop over to their website before you even attempt to make these work pockets. Don't do what I did and lounge around for about three hours trying to do it on your own. <laughs> so before I even started making my twirl, I measured myself and I measured where I wanted the coat to sit on me and where I wanted the sleeves to fall and I adapted those measurements onto my pattern pieces after I traced the pattern pieces out. So um, based on the finished garment measurements, I realized that I needed to shorten the coat by six centimeters. I needed to shorten the arms by around three centimeters. So I made those changes on my traced out pattern pieces before I even started making my twirl, just so that I could see if the alterations I had in my head were gonna work um, on my finished coat. But just to note that obviously, if you are going to be shortening your coat, you need to make sure that you shorten all of the pattern pieces that correspond to the length of the coat, if that makes sense. Um, so taking six centimeters off of the length of the coat meant that I needed to shorten the back piece, the front piece, the lining pieces obviously, and the front facing pieces here. Um, so you just need to remember that you need to shorten any part of the coat that's gonna correspond with anything that you're shortening. Um, and as with the sleeves as well, obviously I shortened them by three centimeters. So I needed to shorten the upper sleeve and the under sleeve and the lining pieces of the sleeve as well. So just make sure that you're kind of shortening everything you need to if you're making that kind of alteration. So once I'd finished making my swirl of the coat, I tried it all on and realized that I still wasn't quite happy with how big and wide the cocoon shape of the coat was. So I decided to take that in. And um, I also wasn't quite happy with how the sleeves were sitting at the top of my shoulders. So I decided to raise the sleeves uh, by about a centimetre just so that they were sitting more where they should be sitting on my shoulders. So once I decided what changes I needed to make based on my twirl, I then needed to redraw those um, alterations onto my pattern pieces and then 
recut them again before cutting into my fabric. So I ended up taking in 1.5 centimetres off of each side of the coat, so that was three centimetres in total, um, 1.5 centimetre on the back and front pieces of the coat. Um, obviously also transferred those changes onto the lining pieces and then because I'd taken up the sleeve slightly onto the shoulder I did raise my sleeve a little bit um, so I then needed to lengthen the sleeve again a little bit and I think I only ended up shortening the sleeve by about 1.5 centimetres in the end just because of those changes that I'd made and the fact that it was sitting higher up onto my shoulder. And also someone kindly pointed out to me, and this is very true, that when you're making your coat from a thicker fabric, it'll automatically kind of take it in a little bit because your seams will be more bulky. Um, and obviously you're likely to be wearing a thicker jumper underneath it as well. So just remember to sort of consider those things if you are making alterations too. So after I'd got all my twirl and all of my alterations and everything done, I then got myself really scared of cutting out my main fabric for some reason. I don't know why, I just couldn't really face actually getting on with the coat. So it took me a good 10 days to actually get around to cutting out my proper fabric pieces. Once I actually got on with it, I actually really enjoyed the process of sewing this coat. Um, so I really took my time with it. Cutting it out was okay, but it did blunt my rotary cutter. I cut it with a cutting board and a rotary cutter and cutting out this main coating fabric did really blunt my rotary cutter. So I'm not sure if that's the best way to do, to cut coat fabric, but it's just the way that I like to do it. So I decided to just stick with what I knew and use my rotary cutter. And then the same with the lining, I changed the blade and cut my lining with the rotary cutter as well. And that all seemed to work fine. In terms of the actual construction of the coat, I don't think this coat is too difficult a pattern as far as coat patterns go because there's not a lot of shaping in there. The most difficult part is obviously these pockets, um, which even they weren't too bad once I'd got my head around the tutorial on the Iron Patterns website. Um, but there are no darts in there, the back is cut all as one piece. Um, yeah, there's no darts. The collar is flat and um, the lapel kind of bits are just part of the front pieces of the coat. There's one buttonhole so you don't have to worry too much about putting too many buttons in or anything. And um, yeah, in terms of sort of the construction and how the coat came together, I found that part of it fine really. And I think if you've made shirts before or blouses or you've put a lining in to anything before, you'll probably be fine. I think the most difficult part of the sewing process that I found was actually just working with the thicker fabrics. So I have a walking foot for my sewing machine and I definitely found that that helped quite a lot in feeding through the thicker parts of the fabric. And I also used a size 90 needle as well, which helped with kind of just managing the sort of thicker fabrics. I didn't think I was going to have to do any overlocking with it, but the taffeta inside did fray quite a lot. Um, so just to kind of make it a bit more long lasting, just so to make sure that lining didn't fray inside or anything while I was wearing it, I did end up actually overlocking all the lining pieces as well, just to kind of um, be on the safe side really. But if you had a more stable lining, then you probably wouldn't need to do that because obviously all of your lining pieces are only encased all inside the coat, so you don't normally need to overlock, but if you have got a particularly fray fabric like I did, you might want to. I think the main difficulty I came into was sort of sewing the coat and the bulkiness of it was when you need to attach the lining and the collar pieces um, kind of all as one. So the lining is sewn all as one piece inside and then you turn it through. So at one point you've got like the main body of the coat and then you've got the collar inside and then the lining um, and the facing of the coat all as one piece. So you've essentially got about four pieces of this thick coating fabric to sew through. Um, and that was the only part of the sewing process that my sewing machine didn't like. So I did need to take that bit really slowly and I was grateful for my walking foot at that point. But yeah, the rest of it sewed fine, which was really nice. So everything came together quite nicely really when I actually got on with sewing the coat. I did it really slowly over about three evenings, I think. And it didn't actually take that long to come together. So yeah, if I sewed it over about three evenings, I think I would have been sewing about two hours, maybe two and a half hours every evening. So maybe about six, seven hours of sewing in total. Another difficulty to mention actually, it was just the sewing of the hem. So if you think that you're, you've got all of your lining pieces and everything all inside out, so you sew it all as one piece and then at the end you kind of turn it through. 
so that um, everything is on the right side. I'm not going to be able to explain this very well, but I think if you've made a coat before, you'll know what I mean. So the main kind of um, thing that made me scratch my head a lot with this pattern was how the hem was sewn. So you sew all around from this um, front facing piece, all around the outside of the lining until it's all kind of attached together. But you leave the bottom of the hem here free. Um, so the facing finishes about three centimetres before the end of the coat. Um, and the hem finishes a little bit lower. So the pattern has you kind of sew the front facing pieces and the hem at different levels. And I found that doing it that way, my hem wasn't sitting properly. It was kind of wonky. So I did have to go back into the coat. I had to undo the hem and kind of turn it all back inside out again and just sew my hem straight across the bottom from where the front facing's finished um, straight across the bottom. This probably isn't going to make a lot of sense, but if anyone's made this coat and done the hem according to the patterns, do let me know the way that you did it. Um, because yeah, it was very difficult to work out and in the end I ended up just doing the hem my own way. Something I should definitely know is that I, um, I contacted Iron Patterns directly on Instagram just to ask them about the problems I was having with the hem. Um, and they were so good at getting back to me and the lady that I spoke to actually went and showed me, like videoed her own coat and showed me how she'd done the hem. Um, and I thought I understood it from her video but then when I came to do it myself I just couldn't quite get the way that they'd done it so I ended up finishing the hem slightly differently to the way that they said to do it but I think that's okay, sometimes you do end up kind of doing the hem um, your own way when you get to that stage of the garment I think. Um, and it's sitting much better and much straighter now the way that I did it myself and the length and everything's still fine so I think that's okay. So I hope this review has been a bit helpful. I think the main things I've learned from this coat making process is definitely not to overthink it too much like I did. At the end of the day, like someone said to me, it's only sewing seams um, and what's the worst that could happen? You might have a disaster but then you'll just try again and it's all a learning process. Um, in terms of the sewing, I think this is quite a good first coat pattern. You wouldn't need to do the well pockets if you didn't want to. Um, in terms of sort of construction, the sewing process wasn't too difficult at all. I think definitely use a walking foot like I did. I think my sewing machine maybe would have struggled a little bit if I didn't have that walking foot with the thick layers of fabric and obviously use quite a thick needle. I used a size 90. But yeah, um, I'm so proud of this coat now that it's finished. I'm really glad that I gave it a go. And I'm glad that I spent the time kind of making sure that I had sized it properly and everything. Definitely make a twirl or a muslin before you cut into your main fabric, unless you're really not bothered about sizing or unless you're better at kind of making adjustments to a garment that's already sewn than I am. But yeah, I found it really helpful to do that muslin before cutting into my fabric. By the time I got around to kind of sewing the proper fabric, I knew what I was doing and I knew that the sizing should be right. Um, so that was really helpful. And I'm definitely not a normal muslin maker. I'm definitely normally just to get on and sew and make alterations after kind of person. But I think with something like this, it was definitely worth taking the time to just get it right. So I hope this review has been helpful. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you have already subscribed and you're a regular watcher, thank you so much for joining me again. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like this video and do leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear what coat patterns you've sewn because now that I've sewn one coat, I obviously want to sew all the coats. So do let me know what coat patterns you would recommend, any that you've sewn that you really like as well. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.